Gideon, the trivial judge. In our last story, we learned how Jabin and his general Sisera oppressed Israel for over twenty years. The Lord sent Deborah, a mighty and wise woman. He also sent Barak, the commander of Israel's armies. They fought valiantly against Sisera and his nine hundred chariots. Sisera fled and was in the tent of a woman named Jael, and killed in his sleep with a tent peg through his skull. In this story, we learn about the oppression of Midian against Israel. God calls an unlikely judge, Gideon, to gather an army, as inspired by the Book of Judges. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we heard how God worked through the faith and wisdom of Deborah, the Deliverer, and the courage of Barak to free the Israelites from Canaanite oppression. We also saw how God used a foreign woman by the name of Jael to defeat the Canaanite general Sesera. It's a story of how God can work and does work through unlikely unknown people to bring about His will and how even the most insurmountable obstacles can be overcome when we trust in God for the result. Today, we're going to hear about another judge or deliverer that God raises up to free his people, a man who wouldn't have made anyone's list of who's who. He was not a great candidate to lead Israel into battle. His name is Gideon, and through the story of Gideon, we'll once again see how God can use even the small, the weak, and insignificant to accomplish great and mighty things. So let's listen now to today's reading. Israel lived in peace. They worked the fertile land, built new homes for their children, and worshipped God. However, compromise began to creep into the house of Israel. A few idols were brought into the temple, and slowly the people began to stray away from God. It was not deliberate, but gradual and unassuming. Soon Israel found themselves caught in another cycle of total depravity. They did only what they thought good for themselves, not for one another. They became selfish and self-pleasing, and turned from God and His law. If history has informed anything, it is that turning away from God is the first step towards destruction. An evil was lurking in the caves above Israel, like a dragon hidden in darkness. The Midianites were dwelling secretly in dens carved in the mountains. Evil laughs and battle cries echoed through the canyons, and campfires lit up the mountain range. The evil horde descended upon Israel like a swarm. Whenever Israel planted crops, the Midianites and the people of the east would rise against them to devour everything in sight. Like pirates, they would pillage, rape, and burn Israel into dust. For seven years, Israel desperately worked to provide their families with safety and food, only to have them stripped away in a storm of Midianite evil. They would hide their livestock and food in their tents, but the Midianites were like locusts, eating up all of it. The people of Israel cried out to the God they had abandoned. Once again, out of desperation, not love, they called upon the God that parted seas to save them. One morning, an angel of the Lord sat under the shade of a terebinth tree. A few yards away, Gideon was beating out wheat and storing it in a wine press to hide from the Midianites. Gideon was smaller in frame, paranoid and constantly looking over his shoulder. He belonged to the weakest tribe in Israel and he was the weakest brother of his family. The Lord watched Gideon work frantically, shaking in fear and fumbling about his work. The angel of the Lord spoke to him from under the tree, saying, God is with you, mighty man of valor. Gideon leapt in the air out of fear, then saw it was not an enemy. Gideon walked closer and said, If the Lord is with us, then why are we living like this? God has forsaken us and given us to Midian like a treat to a dog. Gideon spoke boldly, for he was skilled in the art of whining and complaining. The Lord smiled and said to him, There is might in you. Take it and save Israel from Midian. I am sending you. Gideon laughed 
How could I save Israel? he asked. My clan is the weakest in this region, and I am the runt of my father's house. No, you have the wrong guy. Gideon continued to laugh and began walking away. God said, I shall be with you, Gideon, and you shall strike Midian down as a single man. Gideon turned back to him and said, If you truly are the Lord, and I am truly called to be this hero of yours, then show me a sign. Gideon asked the Lord to stay while he went back into his house to prepare an offering. He prepared meat and cakes. He put the meat in baskets and its broth in a pot and rushed it back to the Lord. Gideon placed the offering on a rock next to him. Pour the broth over the offering, God said. So Gideon made all of the meat and cakes sopping wet, dripping completely with broth. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of his staff and lightly touched the offering. Immediately, like a match to oil, the offering was consumed by flames. Gideon started at the fire in amazement, then turned back to the Lord, but he had vanished in an instant. At that moment, Gideon had perceived that it really was an angel of the Lord he was speaking to, and fear came over him. That night the Lord spoke to Gideon in the quiet. In your town there are many idols. You must remove them immediately, God whispered. Gideon, too frightened of his father and older brothers to do it in the daytime, snuck into the temple at night. Gideon was beating with sweat and constantly looking over his shoulder. He tied a rope around the altar of Baal. It was a massive statue looming over Gideon in the darkness, his torch illuminated the face of Baal staring down at him. Gideon cringed and tied the other end of the rope to his father's bull and slapped it. It ripped the altar of Baal from its foundation and came crashing down, shattering into a thousand pieces. Gideon also cut down other idols that dwelled in the house. Then Gideon took another one of his father's bulls and offered it to the Lord. The men in town rose early in the morning and saw that the altar was shattered. Who has done this? they shouted. The men teemed with anger. Who did this? they shouted again. The people began to gather around the site of the broken idol. They searched around and spoke to every person except one, Gideon. He has done this, they said with their jaws clenched. The men knocked on the door of Gideon's father, Joash. They burst through the door and said, Where is your son? He shall die for what he has done. Joash panicked. He wanted to protect his son, but did not want to invoke the wrath of the city on himself. So, do you fight all of Baal's battles? Joash said, fumbling around his words. If he is a god, wouldn't he want to deal with Gideon himself? The men listened and stormed off. Meanwhile, the Midianite horde crossed the Jordan River and camped in a valley nearby. The Amalekites, along with some mysterious people from the east, joined forces with them and camped there. Their presence was felt by the people of Israel. Fear and hysteria ensued, yet something happened to Gideon. A small spark lit up within him. Something he had never felt before flickered inside him. The Spirit of God clothed Gideon like a suit of armor. Gideon's once cowardly demeanor shifted slightly. In a moment of bravery, Gideon called for the armies of Israel with the authority of a true judge called by God. He sounded the trumpet of war, and it echoed across the cities of Israel. Gideon sent messengers throughout the land to gather an army. The Spirit of God flew like an eagle across the country igniting a fire of hope in the hearts of Israel. Men of war gathered to Gideon. The tribes of Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali picked up their swords and marched. Soon a vast army of 32,000 men stood at attention before Gideon, and he stood amazed by God. The battle was near, and the men were ready to follow Gideon to death and glory. Gideon retreated to a secret place to speak with God alone. The same self-doubt that Moses once had crippled the heart of Gideon. How can it be me? He whispered in prayer. 
Lord, if you will truly save Israel by my hand, show me a sign. So Gideon brought out a fleece of wool and set it on the floor. Gideon said, If you make this fleece wet on the dry ground, I will know it is you, and you have sent me. God did not enjoy being tested, but he wanted Gideon's heart to be comforted. So he made the fleece wet and kept the ground dry. Gideon spoke again, saying, Do not be angry with me, but could you now make the fleece dry and the ground wet? So God did as Gideon asked. This was a small reassurance that Gideon was supported by the God of all creation. Gideon rose to his feet, pulled his shoulders back, and marched towards his army. Forty years had passed since God delivered his people from the Canaanites under the leadership of Deborah and Barak. Life was good. There was peace and prosperity. But eventually, the people once again turned to other gods and brought God's judgment upon themselves. The peace that they had enjoyed for so long crumbled. Midianites, Amalekites, and people from the east began to loot their crops and livestock, leaving Israel in a desperate situation. These foreign enemies had placed their own gods in the temple. They had replaced Yahweh with idols. These, of course, were just man-made sculptures whose only power was to destroy the people's relationship with the only true God. Israel worshipped false deities, and these deities failed them. For seven years, the Midianites pillaged and plundered until God's children cried out to the God that they had forgotten. God heard their cries and sent a prophet to remind them of who he was, what he had done, and how they had disobeyed him. God could have stopped right there and just sent judgment as the price of their disobedience. But God in His grace, God in His great mercy, came once again to rescue His children, and He sent an angel to a man by the name of Gideon. Gideon's first response was to question the angel and to ask why God had abandoned His people. His words are reminiscent of Moses' words to God in the desert. Why did you bring us all this way and leave us here to die? But God pressed the issue. He tells Gideon that there is greatness in him. Even though Gideon was the least of the least of his own tribe, God said that he had chosen him to save Israel. Gideon knew that he was not a man of physical significance or strength, and at first he refuses to do the job. But God tells Gideon he is his man and that God will deliver Israel through him. Gideon is not convinced, and so he asks for a sign. He prepared an offering for God, placing meat and bread in a basket and drenching it in broth. When the angel touched the offering with his staff, flames erupted and consumed the offering. So Gideon's doubt is now burned away with the flames, and now he has a genuine fear. The fear of God is now burning in his heart. He realizes that God is speaking to him, and he's terrified. But God reassures him, tells him not to fear. And then he commands him to tear down his father's idols. God knew that if he was going to give Israel victory and deliver them from their enemies, that he must clean house. These false gods could no longer stand. Israel could no longer be tempted to trust in idols. In the same way, God wants to tear down the idols of our own hearts, the strongholds in our lives that keep us from living in obedience to him. Our own disobedience become idols of the heart. There can be no half measures or half-hearted devotions. God wants all of you. He wants you to be all in. Let there be no other gods before our God. Gideon obeys and tears the idols down. The people become angry with him when they discover what he's done and want to kill him. But Gideon's father challenges the people to let their gods take care of Gideon if they were real. Now Gideon who's full of courage, sounds the call to war. And when he sees that God has indeed called him and prepared him, he is now surrounded by an army of 32,000. But doubt creeps in once more, and Gideon tests God with a fleece. God patiently answers Gideon's call for reassurance and twice proves himself to Gideon. The time for testing is over. Now is the time for battle. And that's what we're going to hear about the next time. It's one of the greatest stories in the Bible. Dear Lord, thank you for today's word. 
and how it shows us that you can use us even when we are small and weak, that you do great things when we surrender our lives to you. Thank you for this reminder that you want nothing less than our full devotion to you. Help us to tear down the other things, the idols that keep our eyes off you, the gods of this world that cannot help us at all. We pray in the powerful and mighty name of Jesus, the God who can do the impossible. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening today to the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. And if you enjoy this podcast, share it with others, people that you love and care about, people who want to know the Bible, help them understand the Bible as well. This podcast can make a huge difference in someone's life. If you want more resources on how to tap into the power of Jesus Christ in your life, then be sure to visit jackgraham.org. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.